That was the scene in California's Mojave Desert five years ago. Our historic first view of the newcomer's ship. Theirs was a slave ship carrying a quarter million beings bred to adapt and labor in any environment. But they've washed ashore on Earth with no way to get back to where they came from. And in the last five years, the newcomers have become the latest addition to the population of Los Angeles. Is that it? Increased magnification. Wunderbar. Now watch this. This is today. chance of instrument or computational error. I ran it five times. It's out there. Charles, you understand the need for absolute secrecy at this point. Secrecy? I've spent every waking moment of the last three years on this project. On our payroll. The board is adamant. They do not want to go public yet. Well, it's too late. I've already called a press conference first thing tomorrow morning. I'm sorry. You're going to have to cancel it. That's absurd. Charles. A discovery of this kind? Why shouldn't we publicize it? You'll get the recognition you deserve. Oh. Just be patient. I've heard that before. No, to hell with the board. I'm not canceling. I really must insist. Carl, get out! I won't discuss this further. It's no use, Carl. I'm not canceling. Did you hear me? Ah! Someone emptied both dryers to do their wash, and they just dumped everything here on the table. Cut us two away. That's his M.O. Oh, no. I guess I had on a little hot. <laughs> Any small, I'd fit a Ken doll. A what? Ken doll, you know, Barbie's boyfriend. Dark hair, snappy dresser, kind of stiff. Never mind. Uh, you got some advantages coming from another planet. Your head isn't crammed with cultural trivia. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I wish it was. It'd make me feel more like I belonged. Uh, I don't wear these anymore. Oh. Uh. Uh, yeah. Are those swimming trunks? No, they're, you know... Uh... Right. Oh, do you like that? I, I saw it in a catalog. I couldn't resist. Very nice. Uh, I gotta get the work. What is that? It's for Matt. August Peltier, attorney at law, Anchorage, Alaska, 
The state of Captain Jack Sykes. Matthew must have inherited this. Come on, Al. George. I told the lawyers I didn't want this. This key came with it. As well. Matt, Jack Sykes. Was he your father? You have been reading my mail, George? No, it was my uncle. Well, allow me to offer you my condolences. Save it. Here we got assigned to a murder case out of Caltech. Matt, aren't you, aren't you going to open it? Albert, don't you have some waste baskets to empty? The victim had some newcomer connections, right? Yes, uh, Professor Charles Tower, an astronomer. He was uh, in the first group of non-military personnel to visit our quarantine camp. Right. What did he do in Alaska? But he's from Caltech. No, I meant your uncle. I don't know. He ran a fishing boat or something. Now, who'd want to kill him? Your uncle was murdered. Professor Tower. Who'd want to off him? Certainly not a newcomer. He did more than anyone to try to find out where we came from. Aren't you even the least bit curious? No. Come on, let's get out to Caltech before the ME leaves. Oh, Matt, it would only take a minute to open it. George. I hadn't seen Uncle Jack in 20 years. I never missed him. I never thought about him. And I sure as hell don't need whatever's in that trunk. Tower spent most of his time with the orbiting telescope at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I spoke with his assistant, Dr. Myers. Tower was very secretive about his work. He felt he never received them recognition that he deserved. <laughs> you know just how he felt. Hi, I'm Sykes. Oh, I... My partner, Francisco. What do we got? Blunt force trauma to the top of the cranium. Split the skull wide open, pushing the bone into the frontal lobes of the brain. When did he die? Time of death? Between 10 and midnight. Where was he when it happened? Is there a problem here? Where was he? Standing directly in front of his desk, there's blood splattered on top of it. Look, uh, if you're some kind of purist or something, that's your business. But you better keep it at home, because I don't like it in my face. I am what I am. A human being who believes in maintaining the integrity of our planet. Why do you put up with that crap? I didn't see any point in making a scene. Two rights don't make a wrong. Two wrongs, George. Exactly. Matt, look at the pattern made by the blood. Something's missing. Something wide, flat, and rectangular was removed from the desk after the murder, taking Tower's blood with it. Blotter, a desk calendar, or maybe a star map. A what? Star map. It's a computer plotted map of the sky, or at least a sector of it. Astronomers use them. How do you know about a star map? What, do you think I'm a complete moron? I'm not complete, no. It's just that you never seem to show much interest in the natural sciences. I know about star maps, George, okay? Come on, let's get over to JPL, find Tower's assistant. I want you to know how sorry I am about Dr. Tower. I wasn't very close with him, but still he was a brilliant, brilliant scientist. Yes, he was. Marissa, I want you to know the board thinks very highly of your work, and so do I. Thank you. We're going to continue your stipend. Excuse me. Are you Dr. Myers, Professor Tower's assistant? Yes. You're from the police? Uh, Detective Sykes, Detective Francisco. Oh, this is Dr. Peterson. He's with the Interplanetary Interest Committee. Excuse me, I'm afraid I've got to go. Did you know Professor Tower? My organization is a lobbying group for space research. I know just about everybody in the field. It's a terrible loss. Excuse me. Please, come on in. I help a few of the senior professors with their research. In return, I'm given time for my own projects. You see, I just got my doctorate. Normally, someone in my position wouldn't be given the time. That's our space telescope. The shuttle put it in orbit back in 1991. You see, it has a radio telescope that picks up frequencies from all over the universe. 
but it also has a powerful optical telescope. And being in space, its vision isn't obscured by the Earth's atmosphere. That's how we get all these pictures. They're beautiful. Matt, do you see? Yeah, real nice. Star map coming off the plotter. That is what you mentioned. What was Tower working on? I don't know. I fed his coordinates into the telescope and set up the computer to receive the data. But he did the rest. Dr. Tower never let me look at his maps. Is there any way we can find out what he was working on? I believe you'll need a subpoena. Yeah, we'll get it. Plus a consultant to go over the data with you. No offense, that's standard procedure. If you remember anything or just need to get in touch, let's hit it, George. Wait. Could I take a look? It's magnificent. The telescope converts what it sees into a video signal, then it beams it down here. Matt, you've got to see this. I've seen it. Look, George, we're on the company clock. Just a little longer. We don't really need to look at the stars for our research. The data is much more useful plotted on paper or, or manipulated as numbers in a computer. But astronomers have always gazed into the sky. I suppose it's just something we need. You didn't even take a look. I wasn't interested. You live on a planet with the most primitive space travel. That telescope is your only access to the universe, and you are not even interested. It's just a bunch of stars, George. To me, it's home. Somewhere out there is where I came from, where I belong. One of those stars rises and sets on my planet. And your past is here, all around you, in the city, in the streets, and even that trunk by your desk. Oh, here we go with the trunk again. How can you ignore it? If I had a trunk from my family, a trunk connected to my past, I... Let me tell you about my past, George. I come from this long line of drunken, wife-beating mix. My old man was the champ. The only one who was any different was my Uncle Jack. He was a, a sailor, a real stargazing poet. I lived with him for a while, and it was great. Like you, George, he just loved to look up at the sky. Got me hooked in it, too. And then one day, suddenly, I'm 13 years old, and Jack ships off on a tanker. And that was it. Back to good old dad. OK? Do you ever dream about home? Home? Tank time. Sometimes, when I close my eyes, I think I can see it. Three moons against a sea of stars. In blue, fields of blue. You were born on the ship. You never saw it. Well, somehow I feel it's in me. George, you've only been under the lamp 10 minutes. You know how irritable you are when you don't get enough UV. Mom, where's my sleeping bag? It's in the hall closet. I looked. Look again. It's there. I don't see it. <sighs> ah, I found it. If he does that to me one more time, I'm going to peel his spots. I look up into the sky at night, and I wonder how far away it is. What I would give to find out which star, just so I could say there, that is my home. Mom, I cannot believe you packed this T-shirt. What's the matter with it? I can't wear this to the slumber party. It's completely childish. So pick another one. They're all like this. Can I have one of yours, one of Buck's? No, you can't have one of Buck's. Why don't you go find one in my top drawer? Thanks. And I want you to get some UV before you go. You're fine. You're going camping. You'll need the energy. OK. OK. I hate to admit this, but I am so glad they're going away for the weekend. If we don't get some time alone, I don't... George? Mm. You're in a strange mood. Oh, sorry. This case, looking through that telescope. Oh, don't worry. This weekend will just be for me and you. I'll open a tin of larvae. <laughs> My God, they've got his blood all over there. We've made some calculations. We've got three days. We'll need someone at JPL. Marissa, she'll send the transmission. Good, then everything's ready. 
Take those away, would you? You know, there's a human expression you should remember. You can't make an omelet without breaking some eggs. These maps will make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. You will come, won't you, Matt? What? To my party tomorrow night. Can we talk about it? Of course. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Look, I can get this myself. Oh, no, it's all right. No problem. Is Jack Sykes your father? Uh, my uncle. was my uncle. He died. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's OK. It's OK. Look, I can, uh, I can handle it myself. Oh, no, no, no problem. I can I'll just get this inside. Mm -hmm. What's in it? I, I don't know. Aren't you going to open it? What is with you people? Were you bred to be nosy? <sighs> I'm sorry. I guess it's none of my beeswax. <laughs> Just what does that mean? Look, it's been a hell of a day. Thanks for the help. Sure. You will come to my party, won't you? Uh, well, don't count on me. We'll, we'll see how tomorrow shapes up, huh? All right. Sergeant, your uncle, Captain Sykes, was he a pirate? A pirate? Yeah, I've been reading this very interesting book, uh, Pirates of the South Seas. Did you know that they buried their treasures in trunks? There is no treasure in my uncle's trunk. Oh, you opened it. No, I didn't open it. But then how do you know? Mm. Matt, I've made some calls. Tower's research was entirely paid for by the Interplanetary Interest Committee. And we met with the director yesterday, Carl Peterson. And it's strange he neglected to tell us any of this. Yeah, that is strange. Burns, what a surprise. What's the matter, run out of two-headed baby stories? Detective Francisco, any idea what Tower was working on? Just ignore him, George. He'll crawl back under his rock. I suppose the poignant irony of this escapes you. Frustrated scientist brutally murdered on the eve of his greatest triumph. What are you talking about? You guys don't know, do you? Well, well, well. Spit it out, Burns. No, you tell me what you know, I'll tell you what I know. Civilized exchange of information. I got you, civilized Matthew. exchange. We just subpoenaed Tower's computer files. We might have something this afternoon. Thank you, Francisco. You are a gentleman. Tower called a press conference just before he got bumped. Let's go pay Carl Peterson a visit. Hey, Sykes, what's this I hear about a trunk? I didn't know I had any information you would need. Professor Tower's death is a great loss to us. He helped our cause tremendously. What cause is that? Interplanetary research, reaching out to extraterrestrial civilizations. Do you know what Tower was working on before he was killed? Not specifically, no. But you paid for his research. A little thing you forgot to mention yesterday. We funded Tower on the basis of his reputation, not the specific proposal. Do you know that Tower had called a press conference before he died? <laughs> I have a very good idea. Let's bring my lawyer into this. Your lawyer? We're not charging you with anything. This is for your protection, gentlemen. To make sure everything is done according to procedure. I wouldn't want any evidence ruled inadmissible. You're saying you won't talk to us unless you have a lawyer? No. Yes. Five, Paul, Charlie, Echo, 374. Registered to Carl Peterson, and wants no priors. He's clean. That yo-yo's hiding something. I'm going to order a 24-hour surveillance. Matt, looks like we have the first shift. Let's see where old Carl leads us. Do you know this club? Uh -uh. Let's just see who Carl's meeting here.
Excuse me, I'm meeting yes. with Professor Peterson. Has he come in yet? I, I believe the professor's upstairs in the smoking room. Come, George. Carl's already upstairs. Uh, just a moment, please. Hold on. Are you friends of the professor? Old friends, dear friends. I think I better call up and tell him you're here. Is there a problem? I'm sorry, gentlemen, but we have a dress code. Oh, of course, I understand. <laughs> How tacky. I'll wait outside, George. I'm afraid not. You must understand, this is a private club. Matt, let's go. <laughs> you mean this is a restricted club? No newcomers? Matt. No, 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 no. I understand. I couldn't agree more. You know, who knows what kind of diseases these slags carry, huh? The things they eat. I hope you uh, don't let any wops in either. Any spicks, any heaps. <clears throat> Keep up the good work. That corner, this guy, you let these jerks walk all over you. It's not important. Do you realize the head of a space advocacy group belongs to a newcomer restricted club? You just stood there. There is no sense in getting upset with stupid people. It is a waste of energy, and you just reduce yourself to their level. Yeah, I'll remember that next time you jump down my throat for telling a spudge hen joke. I am harder on you, not because you are particularly smart, but because I am forced to associate with you on a daily basis. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Matt, you are better than they are. You're worth it. Hey, just a sec. Kathy, uh, Sykes. Uh, I really hate these things. Uh, look, uh, uh, I'll come to your party tonight, okay? These are copies of Tower's star maps. Duplicates of the ones we suspect are missing. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. There it is, the object discovered by Professor Tower. An intelligent radio source on the edge of our solar system headed back into deep space. Maybe an unmanned probe. Who's unmanned probe? It's certainly not one of ours. It's not from this planet. We cross-referenced every comet, satellite, meteor. We know the trajectory your ship must have taken before it crashed. We matched it with this object. We believe it's coming from the same direction that your people were headed. What's it doing? Where's it going? It just went behind the sun. It'll reemerge mid-morning two days from now, but it'll be much further away. It'll only be in range for a couple of hours before we lose it again for good. We'll be tracking it with the rest of the world, trying to make contact. I'm going to notify everyone, all the major observatories. Wait, wait. I don't think you should do that. Why? You are a scientist. I understand. But consider the consequences if it came from the same planet that enslaved my people. They lost valuable property, 250,000 slaves. What if they are looking for that property? What if that thing was sent out to find us? We don't know that. It might not have anything to do with you. But doesn't it make sense? The exact same trajectory as our ship. We can't afford to take that chance. There's something else. This thing, whatever it is, it's probably what got Tower killed. you to feel at home. Come and meet some of my guests. Jerry? Kathy! Ha! Joe, bye. 
Well, what do you think? I like it. Really? Do you really? Yes, yes, I like it. Jerry, I'd like you to meet my neighbor. This is Matt. How you doing? This is my friend John. Hi. John's a composer. This is one of his pieces. Isn't he brilliant? Boad. <laughs> he calls me Boad. It's a newcomer name. It means valiant. I love the sound. Boad. Don't you adore these people? They came with nothing. Nothing. They can appreciate a sunset, a flower, and they are unbelievably sensual. <laughs> oh, there's Bill Shakespeare. Excuse me. Lucky girl. Jerry designs soap. Ah, and what do you do, Matt? I'm a cop. Oh. Nice talking to you, too. Matt, you have to understand, some newcomers resent the police. And with good reason. You know what happened to Tony's brother? The guy's a brilliant nephrologist, right? He's making a house call in Bel Air. These two cops pull him over. Want to know how come a slag is driving a Porsche? Well, he tells them they have no right to question him. Well, fascist turts beat him with their flashlights and arrested him. Fascist turts. Matt, why don't we get you something to no, eat? No, 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 I'd like to hear more about these fascist turts. Just because a tank Denise has a nice car. Well, hey. Let me take this opportunity as a fascist to, to apologize on behalf of the entire Los Angeles Police Department. Matt, it's I also okay. want to tell you about a couple of friends of mine. Hey, listen, man, it's no big They stopped the BMW once for a minor traffic violation. You know what happened to them? The newcomer inside took out a shotgun and blew their faces off. Thank you for making this a truly unforgettable evening. You didn't sleep very well. Your thorax was grumbling all night. Sorry. George? Looking through that telescope. It was so beautiful. I forgot what else was out there. What if the overseers find us? Well, then we'll fight them. And we'll have everyone on Earth fighting with us. Are you so sure? I have to believe it, George. This world is our home now. Uh, you know, I, I've been thinking. What? Well, maybe we should have another child. A child born here. A child of this earth. Are you sure you want to bring a child up in this world? <laughs> our future, our people's future is here, George. Susan, do you realize what this would mean? An infant, all that work. I know, and two days ago I couldn't wait to get Emily and Buck out of the house, and now I want another baby. You're just starting a job. George, I only have three more cycles left. We won't have another chance after that. 
I don't know. Maybe it's a crazy idea. No. The kids, they're growing up so fast. They'll be gone before we know it. Well, maybe I've forgotten what it was like, you know? We've both gotten used to our freedom. And all those sleepless nights. Don't forget the incubation time you'll have to put in with the pod. <laughs> Could be easier this time. We have a house. Could be good for the whole family. Something what decision? We don't have to decide today. Those big yellow things are newcomer skin cells. Well, the white stuff? Bone tissue from Professor Tower's skull. Which means? Which means Tower was killed by a punch from a newcomer's fist. It broke through the cranium, pushed the bone into the brain, but it left those cells behind. A newcomer killed Tower. He devoted his work to tracing our origins. Perhaps you'd like to have a look, Sergeant. I trust your analysis. Newcomers are considerably stronger than humans, more adaptable. Now, in Darwinian terms, what does that mean to our species? It means we'd better stay on their good side. Seeing that Peterson belonged to a restricted club, I did a little checking up. It seems he's a card-carrying purist. So is everybody on his board. So the so-called space research group is really dedicated to getting rid of us. What's that one? Oh, good. I subpoenaed some records from the phone company. Every call made from the Interplanetary Interest Committee in the last three months. Oh, man, this is going to take some time. Maybe not. <laughs> You're putting me on. You can't read that fast. Look, a call made to Tower's office just 30 minutes before he was killed. Unreal. And Carl Peterson is human. He couldn't have killed Tower. I bet he knows he did. Peterson's pretty squirrely. Let's give him a squeeze. Somebody called Tower from this office 30 minutes before he was killed. That somebody was you. You can't do this. Get him away from me. George, there's already one guy in a wheelchair because of you. It's not right. First, I will break your leg. It wasn't me. And then I will eat your face. It wasn't me. Please, George. George, wait. You're saying somebody else made the phone call? Yes. Uh, no, I, I made the call, but I didn't kill him. Then who did? My God! Thirty minutes. That is plenty of time to make sure that he is in his office and then drive over and kill him! You aren't going to hurt him! I called to see how he was doing. We were friends. I called him all the time. Check with the phone company. You talk with Tower all the time, and yet you don't know what he was working on? Let me at him! George! <laughs> Please! George, you're hurting me. Oh, sorry. Yes. Look, Carl! You're the closest thing to a murder spec we've got right now. I happen to think you're innocent. I think you're working with some overseers who killed Tower. The trouble is, my partner doesn't think that. Please help me out. Tell me who it was. I can't control him. Please, call me, huh? Please. Come on, get out. Get out. Get out. Then I will eat your face? Where do you come up with that stuff? I thought that sounded quite menacing. Menacing, right. Just hope we don't get the bill for that desk. Desk? Do you think I'd have to pay for that? Well, Matt, I barely tapped it. <laughs> we didn't achieve our objective, though, did we? I don't know. Carl's cracking. I think he just needs another night to sweat it out. I'd like to talk to you. Maybe this isn't a good time. No, no, no. It's OK. Come on in. I'd like to apologize for last night. Oh, no, no. I was the one out of control. Runs in the family. Oh, no, you were right to be angry. I should have never had this party. I don't even like those people. I, I guess I was just trying to fit in. It was very stupid. The worst thing. I used you. Me? 
Oh, yeah. Well, I did kind of feel on display. Kathy's human date. I'm sorry. Is that you? Oh, yeah. My uncle had some old photos. I haven't seen them in years. <laughs> May I? Sure. I love looking at old family pictures. Where were these taken? Oh, Detroit mostly. That's where I grew up. Also in L.A. You were so lucky to have these. Yeah. Uncle Jack. Is that your Uncle Jack? Yeah. He's in the Merchant Marines. Like, he used to let me wear his, his peacoat. Oh, I love that coat more than anything in the world. You were very close with him. Here, look at it. He left that to you? Oh, this is ridiculous. After all these years, you know. I lived with my Uncle Jack off and on whenever my old man got out of line. But old Jack was a sailor. And one day he took off. I never forgave him for leaving me behind. I never called. Never answered any of his letters. What a dumb kid, huh? <laughs> just, just wish I could have said goodbye. Can I show you something? On the slave ship, we were with our parents until we were 10. And then we were taken away from them. Sometimes to another workstation, sometimes to another planet. We never saw them again. A quarter of a million of us on that ship and somehow the rumors still filtered back about a family member who'd been shipped to a mining colony or to another workstation, another ship, or someone who died or been killed by the overseers. We never really knew for sure. See that constellation? Orion? That's my father, standing watch, protecting me when I was too exhausted to move. And that one? Cassiopeia, the queen. My mother, with the dignity that no one could take away from her. The swan, I forget what it's called. That's me, when I was still a girl, before I was taken away from the people I loved. These are my old photographs. Detective Sykes. This is Carl Peterson. Yeah? Yeah. You're early. We've got a big day ahead of us. Who are you calling? Uh, nobody, a friend. It can wait. Our message. Have you spoken to the woman at JPL? Does she know that we're coming? Marissa, uh, no. I thought it best if we just showed up. Then let's go. Is everything ready? What's it say? What we agreed on in the beginning. We survive. Our cargo of 250,000 awaits your arrival. No, no, there's more here. I can read some of this. 
It says so. I told you what it says. I had a feeling he was in trouble. He's dead. It's a photocopy. Can you read it? It's a Tinktonese binary code. What the overseers used on our ship. Like a Morse code? Yes. We use something like it to tap messages to each other. Kikirunko. We survive. A cargo of 250,000 awaits your arrival. Slukino. Plus an additional four billion more. And it's followed by a set of celestial coordinates. Coordinates? Earth coordinates. Matt, it's what I thought. That probe, they're trying to contact that probe. Four billion more slaves? The entire planet? That space telescope, George. It also has a transmitter. Dr. Myers, Dr. Sergius Fromm. Board of the IIC, Professor Peterson sent me. He sent you? He couldn't come himself. This is the message he'd like transmitted. I, I don't understand. Of course, Professor Peterson didn't tell you. We'd like you to make contact with the probe when it clears the sun and send this message. I'm not authorized to transmit. I'll have to confirm this with him. There really isn't time. Is it locked onto the probe's coordinates? On to the probe's coordinates. Yes. Access the transmitter. Continue. When this reaches zero, the probe has cleared the sun. Is that correct? Send my message as soon as it does. seconds early. The probe wouldn't have quite cleared the sun. Most likely the message was lost. Most likely. Most likely. You still thinking about that case? No. Something else. About you and me. Our new child. Our new child. I may dream of our planet, but you're right. This is our home now. This strange, wonderful Earth. The child will bond us to it. Yes. She got the unless geval. Can you love me? Keep your eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> okay. They're yeah, almost. Now, it isn't as good as being there, but maybe it'll do for now. Open your eyes. It's for you. It's my uncle's. Matt, I, I... Listen, I knew the guy pretty good. If he was around, he'd give it to you himself. Thank you. I remember when I was a kid, looking up in the sky with him, feeling so small. There's so many stars, Kathy. So many suns and so many planets. Yes. I often ask myself, why is it, how is it that we ended up here? 
We all ask ourselves that. But you were born here. This is your home. You know, my uncle spent his whole life traveling. When you'd ask where he called home, he'd point right here. Why don't you take a closer look at your family photos?